today we are taking the first class of introduction to automata theory and languages and computation this is one of the basic founding uh, pillars of computer science uh, so what is first of all automata theory automata is a plural term singular term is automaton automaton is a machine a single machine automata is a plural Automaton is a machine. is not like a lathe machine or like a drilling machine. It is, but it's a mechanistic certain pro. Uh, is a is a mechanical thing. You can think of now. It can be put in digital and all this. But it is a which can make some computation. That is the automaton, and and the, another is the language. What is language? Language is you have a, a basic hardware, the automaton, and then you have to simulate the hardware to run your process same way you can take it as a, a crude example of automaton is our your laptop hardware and how to uh, put energy into it you have to say certain languages like c python and java these are all programming languages but if we take a very subset a very very subset of this but which is of all the facilities that we call formal language so what is language then the language is whatever we can speak to each other that is a spoken language and you know that is our right, right now the programming languages like python is, is trying to mimic this kind of written language at least not spoken and if you go for earlier languages like java and c they uh, have some uh, semicolon analysis thing which we do not write basically the python goes to that approximation say you don't have unnecessary semicolon and all so this is all the programming languages and what is formal language is this formal language is a subset of programming languages but which can have all the facilities so that any programming language is so what is the formal language is required the formal language is required so if you have any problem first you have to have then solving it you need an algorithm after you select an algorithm probably you all are aware of your classes the you, you may not find some algorithm there are some i'll this is the interesting theory of the class where we know there is some uncomputable functions and the, in fact most of the problems in your life in uncomputable will be how many types of uncomputable even if it is computable it is maybe highly computation intensive like if you know the uh, say in say selection sort it is the n square algorithm but if this these are all computable problem easy problem but then we come the exponential problem like if you see is a tower of hanoi problem there is a eight disk if you want to shift uh, this disk to another one and we have to do it that way that in uh, smaller disk can be on larger disk then you need 2 to the power 7 minus 1 so th then the number of disk goes to the power it's a tower of hanoi problem this is one of the first problem which cannot be solved uh, linearly. So it is the exponential problem. This is toughest problem. Then other toughest problems also there, like, like traveling salesman problem, uh, maybe factorial n into two to the power n type of things. Like a, a particular travel salesman wish to travel uh, eight hundred places in India, and every everywhere is everywhere is connected, but he wants to start from he or she may want to start at the same city and coming back to the same city again traversing each city once and only once and what is his optimum route so that route is minimum cost or minimum distance and this is very tough problem it cannot be done by two foreign also it may be two foreign factor these are the this is the interesting theory of the computer science that we come to know the there exist some problems the which problems can be done easily? Easily means whenever your complexity is in ON, ON square like uh, insertion sort, selection sort, then the, if it is better algorithm than N log N, mark sort, uh, then uh, matrix multiplication may be in U. Uh, then we have like this kind of problem like uh, Tower of Hanoi, it is a 2 to the power N minus 1 states is required then traveling salesman problem that the particular salesman traverse all the cities only once come back to that with the minimum cost this is a tough problem now a 
again the tougher problem comes. There are some problems which cannot be computable at all, at least because you cannot say that it can be done. It is always a really interesting computer science that, in, in fact, computer science starts from the 20th century uh, with the paper of 1930 paper of Alan Turing. So, before that, some works are there. Yeah, uh, so it is a very young science and there are lots of problems uh, there and complexity can be decreased. Some problems are uncomfortable with computer. I mean, one, one of the basic book is I follow the Hopper, so all books are available at the library. There is, this is one of my favorite books, Michael Sixer, Introduction to the Theory of Computer. This is also good. Yeah, let's come back to the basic heart of the computer science. The heart of the computer science is not programming languages. Again and again, heart of the computer science is to find a problem uh, and solve it. Uh, like here, we we are to we are to find the uh, needle in the haystack problem. How to do it? So one thing we can do, we can search every haystack and find it needle. Uh, but that is not a clever. Uh, that is a brute force algorithm. That is also algorithm. That is brute force, but that is not interesting. But if we use uh, the brute force algorithm is always we make it uh, so that you can compare other algorithms with the brute force algorithm. Say if we uh, can ha can get use of a magnet, we can quickly find it out in this uh, needle. So we can, this is one example, a crude example of example, what is the purpose of algorithm is. Algorithm is, is a clever way uh, so that you can find it. Brute force algorithm find all the possible. So it is uh, it is generally you cannot call it that way the clever algorithm. We'll come to that. So algorithm design we already know that techniques are there. You have to do group force like selection sort. You compare each and each each pair there, and then the composite ones. Even if a perfectly sorted number is given to selection sort, it, it will again take O n square. Even bubble sort is better. That will take O n. Uh, Insertion sort is O n, but selection sort again take O n square. That is the reason I told the uh, this stupidest of sorting algorithm, the selection sort. Then the, whenever you go for divide and conquer, like you, you have a list of numbers, you divide by half, then divide by half, and you then uh, uh, sort it, and then you merge it. That is a merge sort. You get an advantage of n log n. That's a clever algorithm. It's very good algorithm. So these are the various techniques are there, algorithm design techniques. And then the complexities are there. So linear, most of the cases, a logarithm, we say binary search tree, whether the tree is already sorted and in the binary search tree to find the uh, any element in the O n log n, O log n. O, uh, remember here the base is 2. But if it is linear, so if it is a linear list, you have to find that particular uh, number in every nook and corner, you have to go one by one, so when, but if it's a binary search tree, if you go to the middle, all the bigger element on the right hand side, on the lesser element on the left hand side, then again the middle of the right hand side, then you find it. So you, you always, your searching space, you divide it by half, uh, divide by half. So that is the reason you get the complexity logging. And constant is that it is easiest, like whenever you something operation and push and pop, everything happening on the stack. Stack is very useful thing. Uh, we will see again and again. So here, um, that is yes, so O1. So these are the time complexity. So uh, obviously, this is in the first, uh, if you second semester and third semester, we already covered uh, what is program is, what is algorithm is, what is time complexity is, and I think you know space complexity. But what this course we come to know that what is computability. The difference between complexity and computability is that and whenever a, a particular problem is computable, then you can find it is complexity. If it, whether the problem is computable at all, so that is the thing we can find it here, whether it's computable or not, then you have, within, if it is computable, then you need a machine, you need a machine and there are several kinds of machine, uh, finite state machine, 
push down automata that means a machine with some stats and another is very very simple looking machine that is a Turing machine a single bit of strip a read write head and with some it go for left and right and all this well, these are machines and to titillate to work on this machine we need some language that is formal language not programming language this formal language is basically your mother of your all programming languages. So, if you can prove, you can solve a problem with a formal language, with target on a machine, then you can say we can solve the problem. Interesting fact is that if there is any algorithm, any algorithm for solving a problem, it can be solved by a Turing machine. That is the way. Uh, Alan Turing, 1936 to 37 paper, he has stated, and whatever is solvable problem, even the basic machine, a, a paper tape, a read and write head, which can go only one step right or one step left, but cannot stay alone and read something on it, write something on it, and it is controlled. DJ it is a finite state machine, and whenever is any problem is given. The problem statement uh, should be in some programming language, uh, not for a formal language. The formal language is, uh, is, is, is preferably it will come to that particular grammar, uh, deterministic context free grammar. Most of the problem, most of the programming languages are deterministic context free grammar. We can write it and that can be solved by Turing machine. If it cannot solve that Turing machine, that then there is no algorithm at all. So this is a very Good way of testing of your fundamental understanding of computer science that for a fundamental understanding of computer science you do not need a very costly laptop or hardware, and only pen and paper. And that uh, Turing has developed this machine with the pen and paper. Later on, it realized after that. So, uh, what we will cover? We cover the time complexity and uh, time complexity, not how much time is equal, that is the main thing, another space. How much space is required? That is also sometimes secondary concept whenever it, the space is limited. So, time complexity we know there are mainly two kinds of machine. One are, one are the problems are the like n, n square, n to that is called polynomial type of problem. Polynomial problem, though it is n to the power 4 or though it is n to the power 5, that is the problem and easy for, for the computation. But whenever it is a non polynomial, when exponential, like I have told you, this Tower of Hanoi, Tower of Hanoi problem, this is uh, non polynomial, it is exponential, uh, it is uh, 2 to the power n. So, this is a, a difficult problem, but it is again a solvable problem. But there are some problems which are uncomfortable, unsolvable, till now, those problems will be interesting to us. And because those problems cannot be solved by uh, our traditional. Uh, automata and traditional programming languages. Yeah, next I think you all know these are the typical complexity like array one, like this thing. Yeah, what is algorithm? I think you know all this. Algorithm is a sequence of instructions that one must perform in order to solve the well formed problem. This is very interesting. The algorithm should not have any loop and for every problem uh, algorithm operating system is not algorithm because it is continuously running and algorithm should have a input uh, and some states uh, and a, its output uh, it should have input it should have output and it should have states and that is the big thing and some of the problem like jigsaw problem like if you uh, ask one problem is that you write something on your screen of paper that I, I generally write it. You, you write it as a drawing, a, a drawing of a uh, tiger and all these things. Then you cut in pieces into 32 pieces. Then I have, if we told you to make this tiger again with the 32 pieces, then this is a zigzag puzzle. You everywhere match with the tiger's tail is coming or ear is coming and all this. So all 32 pieces you have to bring and test it. So that is not algorithm. That is, you call, call a process that is not algorithm. Algorithm means it should be independent of your number of items. So, if there are say 1000 items to be sorted, if you tested it with 10 items, 
power 50 I, I think it is, it is good then it should solve 1000 items it should solve uh, 1 million items that is algorithm algorithm should not depend on algorithm time complexity should depend on uh, your number of samples but algorithm process should not depend on the number of elements that is the basic distinction between algorithm and uh, brute force process so but one good thing of our automata will see if there is an algorithm it can be solvable by turing machine turing machine description i'll come again before turing machine we have to understand before that finite state machine which is the with heart of your all machine then come push down automata and then come turing machine but the beauty of is any algorithm can be solved by turing machine okay. so algorithm i have told this is uh, a computer algorithm which is step by step with the solve it from the computer and uh, it is not every algorithm uh, can be written by any programming language all programming languages are now very powerful and remember our formal language whatever we do it in this uh, uh, class that is a basically a mother of all programming languages so formal language is nothing but a programming language which runs to program a finite state machine or next higher machine is pushed down automata and then the Turing machine these are the formal language and so any algorithm can be written in formal language also why we are uh, not taking any programming languages in in our data structure class also uh, uh, some uh, authors favor uh, with uh, python because python is more uh, more algorithms are available some people are c some authors like teachers with java or it can be done without any language also the data structure course can be done by the pseudo language uh, like uh, by algorithm and that is good so formal language uh, here is same kind of language it is said to be pseudo language algorithm and program you know that is a program can loop algorithm should not loop like operating system is a program not an algorithm like this i think you all know basic first basic algorithm is gcd how the gcd calculates this is this is the example of a good algorithm how this is greatest common division is that so they have covered uh, this is interesting this is all an easier problem even o1 going to this is called polynomial problem and this is like tower of hanoi problem this is, is a tower of hanoi and uh, this is exponential problem and these are much tougher from factorial a this is very problem but this is the problem which can be solved but there are some problem which is uncomputable like i told jigsaw problem turing halting problem i will discuss in our subsequent classes these are the time complexity chart you know this is tower of hanoi problem it is always state i have to keep if you are eight this you need to the power eight minus one states to shift all the disks to a algorithm you know it it should be independent of programming language or machine it can be done these are the different algorithm you already know brute force i've already covered the selection sort that is always you take the minimum and put it in then again take the minimum put it in so this is a sorted this is unsorted even you go to the find the minimum to it and now the it is a final now if it will give this uh, already sorted things to again selection sort again it goes and find 12 here again is try to find it which is minimum so again is a so even a, even a almost it is sorted uh, list is given to selection sort it will give again o n square time so this is very stupid algorithm but you must go the stupid algorithm i think this is stupid is then the uh, our bubble sort of is we is best time is also n square is uh, worst case time also n square generally we, we measure by worst case and even the best case is also n square insertion sort is that way better it is though both are o n square problem but the, uh, the multiplication factor of o n square item is less so this is a better algorithm and best is divide and conquer like uh, 
not so. These are the types of algorithms. But here comes the undecided. Okay, that is the major uh, teaching point of this course. That undecided something is there. So if if the problem is there, if you can find the algorithm, you can always try to improve the algorithm. Like uh, selections are bubble sort is stupid. Selections are stupid. You can make better insertions or then mass sort is better in log n like this. But these are all polynomial problems, but there are some problems you cannot ignore like exponential uh, hard. There's computationally tough problem that is uh, two to the power n problem like tower of n and there are some problems are undecided. Okay. This is one of the problem and undecided means you cannot have a uh, Turing machine for this. These are the computable problem multiplication primality detection which is also around 20 years back it was with uncomputable but right now so it is it is computable it is but it is a uh, now it it is always computable but hardness is less uh, but uncomputable is halting problem i will tell that halting problem what is halting problem is there like if you you, you cannot design a program which can take any program and input and guarantee you that program will stop or not. You cannot design a program which can take any program at its input and it decides the program will stop or not or forever then. This is called Turing halting problem. It is unsolvable problem. You cannot design a program which can do this. There will always some input that will be there that the program will be forever looping into. That is just not halt. Halt means good. If it is not doesn't halt, that means that there is uncomputable problem. There is certain type of equation. The tiling problem I have told you. This is tiling. This is also uncomputable because you have to search for every tiles whether it matches or not. You have to you have to always whole tiling. The if you see the tiling uh, tiling craftsman, they always find it out whether it matches. So this is not an algorithm, this two kinds of process have brute force process. So there are these are the uncomputable problems. Automata theory is the application in every computer science system. So that is a, it's a compiler because lots of compilers, neural languages there, compilers are coming, programming languages, computer protocols, circuits, pattern recognition. In fact, everywhere the basic this is the fundamental things of the Automata theory is there. George Bull is the person. I will come. What is his contribution? Okay, all you know. This is very interesting. This uh, this gentleman, a Cantor, he once finds the set in 1874. Remember, 18, Rabindranath was born in 1861, and 1874 he discovered set. It is this unordered set of unique items. And he found it and he, he, he discovered it in some trigonometric analysis. That is, he discovered, say, he has single identity, he was great thing. He, had, he discovered there are two kinds of infinity like uh, there is smaller infinity and bigger infinity. Like if you have a in number of integers, number of integers, say, positive integers, or uh, and if you have a real number. You have it integers, but you can always a number. Thing. But if you say real number, say real number between one and two, you cannot number them. There is always a bigger number of real number, much much bigger than total integer. So that is a one is countable infinity and another is uncountable infinity. The great thing he discovered in uh, between 1884 and 1900 that is that is acknowledged by David Hilbert. Who was a great mathematician of the 20th century? Good link. This will cover it. I will cover it. This is the 1936 of Alan Turing. Because these are the basic foundation works by Vic Cantor and the Gödel and the Turing machine. I will decide. Decidable then. We'll, we'll discuss. There's another great person is Noam Chomsky. He, he, this is from the languages part. I have told you 
that uh, in formal language and automatically we want is machine part, automaton part, automaton is we start with combinatorial circuit, combinatorial circuit is nothing like you switch on or off uh, and another is if you have some number of states, uh, you can have number of states, there is some uh, feedback part that is called uh, sequential circuit, one is very basic is combinatorial, no loop back. This combinatorial circuit, then some sequential circuit, you can do that. We call it a finite state machine. And this finite state machine, most of our, say, our lift, our lift is a finite state machine. Uh, a very ambassador car in the previous day, first gear, second gear, third gear, that is also finite state machine. Most of the machines, whatever we are seeing in the mechanical field, all are finite state machine without computers, and they are doing the great job. So, then the uh, this is a machine part, and now another is our spoken language, and that's where we can I'm talking each other. Noam Chomsky, a single language, discovered this. What is the language? Why most of the spoken languages all over the world have certain basic things are there, certain rules are there, certain grammars are there that automatically comes from. You can generate infinite number of meaningful sentence using those grammar. That is his discovery that any language, say English or Bengali or Hindi or Sanskrit or Latin, there is some built-in grammar. So there is some alphabet. Alphabet means uh, like our English uh, A to Z. Take it as a, only the uppercase, 26 alphabet. And this, you can make a meaningful word on it. And then with the sentence on it. So you need a finite set of alphabet. This is a finite set of character symbol, find that is called alphabet. A, a finite set that you can make a sentence out of this finite set of symbols with concatenation with some rules that is called grammar. So all these things see single language develop and there are several kinds of languages. Uh, Type 3, type 2, type 1, type 0, that is the highest form of language like spoken communication. Type 3 is a regular language which can auto which can simulate any finite state machine. What is finite state machine? That it can finite state machine is nothing but it can go through the one state to one state and with whether some state are acceptable, some state are not acceptable with input state. We'll come to that. What is finite state machine? Which is the heart of your push on automata, uh, which can take uh, the languages of uh, context, uh, uh, the context free grammar. Uh, so, we'll come to that. This is Wong Chong. He is still, still lives. He is a sovereign statesman also. We'll come to that. Yeah, the same is before Brock Brick Cantor. He developed in 1874, I think. He, he developed it and he discovered this countable and uncountable. I have told you the integers are however infinite, but you can count them. You can give a number. You can give a number, say 1 to 1, next thing 1 to 2, like this. You can always count them. But whenever you have a real number between every, every two numbers, you can have infinite number. So this is a true kind of infinity. Infinity, I call it a countable and uncountable. This is his discovery. And set also, we will discover also. So these are the fundamental history of set. This is Cantor has done, like natural number. Uh, there is no largest data, there is always a greater number than this. Defining natural number. I, I have taken all these slides from Michael Six's book. Michael Six's book, I have already given you. I will give you. Like say, this is a safe declaration, like in this, like a Python language of the same, like second bracket opening. And you can say the proper set, there are at least one set which is not going to be there. Infinite state is like this, empty set is this. Like if you have a set, we start with T. Like Teddy Fee, Kudra theory, we start with T 
and uh, these are the number of states which ends with Z for Jed and Rajvataj, and it is all microsystems. No? So, if you have a so come to this formal language theory, is a drama classification. This is single-handedly done by Noam Chomsky and Automata. Lots of scientists have done. Uh, definitely, Alan Turing runs supreme here. So, we will come to know and we are very related. Today, uh, just we give a little introduction to finite automata. I will come again to finite automata again. Finite automata, uh, first it is combinatorial circuit like our switchboard, one on off, there is no feedback. Then the next state is the combinatorial uh, circuit. So, this is a feedback path and you can go from one state to another and some states are called final states. So, so, whenever you reach that state, that means you accept the string. So, what is accept the string? String is kind of a language. Alphabet is number of sim symbols. There should be finite number of alphabets. Uh, like in digital hardware, we have alphabet 0 and 1 only, and English language say A to Z. So, we can have we can input the symbol like 0 and 1 only or A to Z like this. And after simulating, the state is changed. It might change, it may not change, but if we give a put of string, if it goes to the final state, final state, how do you know if the final state is a two concentric circle? Then we say the string is accepted, and uh, whenever and it should have number of states should be there, and there should be one and only initial state, and there are maybe only one and more than one final state. So your final state can be all three can be or at least one, and it should have only one initial state. And you can simulate with your alphabet uh, like zero and one here. Your alphabet is zero and one. If we say here. If we see it here that if we push 1, it goes to Q2, again 1, Q3, it accepts it. And again, if you number of zeros are coming, it is accepted. If it is number of ones are coming, accepted. So anything is from 1, 1, 1, 1, and any number of zeros or any number of ones, it is in accepted state. But if it is, if the string becomes 1, 0, then it goes back again. Then 1, 0, it will loop it. That is not accepted. Okay. So if one, 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 another one, another one, it goes to accepted. So this is a called tuple. Tuples in Q is the number of states. Here, uh, capital Q. What is capital Q? Small Q1, small Q2, small Q3. And what is sigma? Sigma is here the input alphabet. Here, input alphabet is 0 and 1. And delta is the transition function. Like whether it go to Q1 to Q2 or like this, that is a, I, I will make a tabular sort of thing. And there must be a Q0. Here, Q0 is noted as a Q1. Q0 is a, but that is general function. Q0 is a starting uh, state. Here, Q0 is shown as a Q1. There must be one and only one starting function. And if in this number of states, number of states which can be an accepting state. Here, only Q3 belongs to this. So, this is called a finite state machine. We call it 5 to 2. This is very basic fundamental block of a computation. Even a uh, regular language, any computer automata, even in Turing machine. We have to understand again and again. I will follow. Thank you for giving this.